Planetary borders don't stop us. Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back. Today we continue the journey to connect all the planets, potentially lose even more duplicates and expand our ever-growing colonies. Oh yeah, and I dropped an ocean in the magma biome. Remember that at this point in time I'm playing on all of these asteroids simultaneously. So there's a lot of side stories happening here and there. And we are starting with the stapler gun side story. First let's check out our magma planet. Last episode we have seen the stapler gun land here and with a lot of luck survive in the spacefarer module. But what happened after that? First I planned and constructed a little bit of power and then I tried to convince our Sneezy the stapler gun to at least build a printing port. Also let's not forget to hook up the solar power to battery as well, which will allow us to power the fridge inside of the rocket. I also changed the interior a bit. Stop puking! Dude, just... no. Outside of the rocket we managed to build the mini pot. After activating the pot and waiting for a bit we got our first care package. Paku, take a look at this. But we do not have water. We do have water. A lot of doop puke. With these wise words spoken a tiny Paku pocket got prepared. The mini pot selected, the Paku got printed. The only thing that is left is, well, collect enough liquid from the duplicant. Because at the moment the Paku don't seem to be overly happy about their situation. But at least we did manage to give the stapler gun a little bit of relaxation. The next thing that I wanted to have built is a small payload system. But on Firibone nothing has been built yet because the stapler gun is in a constant loop of getting radiated, which stresses them out so much that I need to use the massage table, which is not insulated from the radiation, creating basically an infinite loop. So let us redesign the whole thing. I redesigned the stapler gun's bedroom. Now it is down to only 7 rats per cycle instead of a few hundred. Another reason for the high stress level was of course the high skill level of the stapler gun, so let's skill scrub them and then see what happens next. Okay, update. I finally got the stapler gun to build this here. It took a little bit of red alert and a lot of puking. Now they can calm down again. I did that because the oxygen as you can see is pretty much gone. So this dupe will not survive for much longer except from the pockets of the polluted oxygen if we don't send over any oxygen. Which is why I also hooked up our oxygen supply here to the interplanetary launcher which we can now aim at Firibo. Hopefully this will start sending this over in 200 kilogram packages. Let's just unpause this, see if this fires it does not let's reduce this to 150 there we go and with this our payload is on their way of course it would be too easy if i had actually prepared anything beforehand i did forget the piping for the oxygen just remember that i play on six planets at the same time and this is just one of the side stories that is happening <laughs> another thing that is missing is of course the gas vent how else could it be sorry the stable gun bring up the dupe death count you couldn't make it. And couldn't finish the piping. At least should have built the piping man. That just means we need a little bit more free labor. One or two more scapegoat duplicates that can actually build the piping. For that reason I decided on Ruby here. I don't think it is a good idea to give this duplicate a patron name. So Ruby you will stay Ruby and I will put you in a work only schedule. For now Ruby did manage to build the vent at least. But that was pretty much the only thing they could accomplish in their dupe time. Such minor hindrances don't even bother us. Lyra will take care of the rest. And Lyra actually did a splendid job at that, fulfilling her one and only task that she was printed for. Thank you Lyra for your sacrifice. Thanks to you we finally have oxygen in this miserable place. At least the next duplicate has a chance now. Oh take a look at this, we do have a new stapler gun. And even with the same blue hair, a mouth breather which is not very good but skilled at hard digging. The stapler gun I'm not making any promises but welcome to the fiery planet. Maybe this time I don't forget about you. Here the reminder again, I played on 6 planets and didn't really care about this one too much. By the way, Lyra is still falling here. We might have to do something about that. How about a tasteful memorial right under the mini pot. I also thought more power can't hurt. And if I found a care package that does not spoil, like this snazzy purple suit here or these hexalan fruits, I printed them on the fiery planet. This concludes what happened on Firibo. Now let's check out another planet. This one for example, here on Zapiol. This cooling loop finally has been built. 
and it has been running through the whole base, cooking it in the process and then recooling it in the process as well. A lot later, we finished the encasing for this giant water pool here. A lot of micromanagement, building tiles over gas pockets to get rid of them and so on. But now we can do something that I wanted to do for a whole while now on this planet, which is using the geothermal power on this planet. Sadly, our plastic funds were only enough to build one measly steam turbine. But hey, better than nothing. What we have to do now is send in duplicates to collect the rest of the materials here and then dig straight through the bisolite here down to the magma. Hopefully dropping the whole ocean of the salt water on top of it. And we definitely need to close this with an insulation tile. Closed off and ready to pressure cook, the magma is making quick work of all of our salt water. Steam and heat is definitely there, but our steam turbine is not activating. That is because I forgot to hook up the cable. But ignore this for a second, take a look at this here. Since we only have a one tile gap for the steam to go up and the liquid to go down, we have an abnormously high steam pressure down here. The 5 tons per tile even screwing up the visuals. And 500 kilograms per tile up here. It is also to be expected that all the salt water that is evaporating will create salt. The salt liquefies, cools down again, gets solid, gets liquefied again and so on and so forth. A few cycles later the pressure evened out and now we are at 1200 kilograms per tile down and around 800-700 up. The next change that you might notice is that the doors underneath our steam turbine are missing. I planned them in order to control the steam input better, but chose the material poorly. All of our uranium ore doors just melted and then formed natural tiles below. What also melted is our liquid output, which is why you see me extract the steam turbine water with another method. Finally activating it, by the way. I have the feeling that if properly cooled, this will pretty much run forever. At least until we finish the let's play. Wait a second, reverse the video. Did I just saw a delectable and a shovel down there? Yeah, correctly. <laughs> nice. Then I spent 40 cycles somewhere else and when I came back, the temperature still looked nice, the steam area is still pretty hot, we did have to move our steam turbine though. And in the process block a few ports. We deconstructed the old steam turbine, corner built more insulation tiles so that two ports are blocked so that our steam turbine no longer overheats. This produces the full 850 watts of power constantly for, I don't know, ever. Take a look at this steam here, those are 760 kg of 400 degree steam or if you go down here still the same oh it has evened out if we need more steam we can even just deconstruct our infinite storage that we have here with around 196 tons times four and dump it on this magma connect it up to this room and we do have power for basically ever also i find it hilarious that we have this many <laughs> <laughs> this many morphs. This isn't even a dedicated morph factory. They just freaking appear because I do have the outhouse here which should be constantly blocked. It is not but it doesn't matter. It will be out of order soon enough and every time I reload the game we spawn in another morph. Morphs need at least 5 tiles to produce the maximum amount of polluted oxygen that they can and for me they look like one of those lava lamps. Further up in the same base we have a surviving pocket of uranium ore and because we will need that to build something, this remaining natural habitat has to go sadly. It may look like the dupes took care of that quickly but that is just the power of editing. That pretty much sums up what happened on Zepiel. Now let's check out what happened on Flodista in the meantime. Here on Flodissa we did pick up a few duplicates in the background, increasing our total number at that point in time to around 60. With all those duplicates we of course needed to connect more pipes to pump in more oxygen into their prison cell. Another thing that I did in the background is build a farming area for mealwood. Not for the mealwood itself, but for the mealwood seeds, which we can use to make our food stay fresh for longer. Besides all the things that happened in the main storyline on Flodista, those have been the only minor changes. But now let's take a look at this planet. On Ains asteroid, HP is blue in the face from the freezing cold temperatures. And our steel production provides a slight radiation risk for the duplicates, which is why I chose to insulate it with a bunch of plastic tiles. Same here to the left. Then we designed a sweet duplicate apartment on top of that, just for the thrill. Colored the toilet room to the right blue as well and distinguished the meal with areas with a green background. Let me also share my shovel experience with this design here. The shovel, when the game lags especially hard, path in weird ways they normally shouldn't be able to. Which is why I had to catch them, reinforce the room and put them back in. Just so you know why I changed the tiles here. Then it was time to give the great hall a lemon fresh overhaul, paint the toilet background blue, the mealwood room green and grey out the heating with the integrated temperature plates. For the ladder system we went with a simple white finish. 
Time for the dupes to lay back and grab a nice and fresh can of soda. But as you can see, that is not possible, cause we are missing the carbon dioxide for that. So as a nice little side project, we can build a dedicated CO2 setup, which then allows us to refill the soda machine. We had to change the design a lot of times and vacuum it out multiple times as well. But in the end, we ended up with a functioning design, supplying our gas canister filler right next to the soda fountain. Now the duplicants can chill out in peace. Or panic. Panic is also an option. Our pee pool will also not stay unused. A few deodorizers should supply the base with additional oxygen for the low price of a bit of sand, power and a burning sensation in your eyes. Then I finally added the annoying two missing background tiles behind the floating thingy. Air tunnel, that's the name. For further design reasons I designated a master art worker. Then added a few temp shift plates to even out the temperature towards the bedroom. On a planetary scale, in order to excavate more of the planet, we implemented a few gas pumps, reducing the chlorine levels in the lower base, while at the same time distributing more oxygen as well. A quick overhaul of the massage room later, Aiden takes a deserved break. Back to the excavation, I thought why not give the auto miners a chance to prove themselves useful once in a while. And while that is happening, encase the chlorine vent so it no longer ruins our atmosphere. As the excavation progressed nicely over the next 24 cycles, we could catch a glimpse of a conversation Aiden between and Lamb to seem to be getting along quite well. I don't know why, but I do have the feeling that there is something cooking in the background. Sometimes Lamb doesn't seem to be agreeing with Aiden's iron ruling. Well, this is not a democracy. This is Aiden's autocratic S which looks like this at the moment by the way. I am not sure what this down here to the left is. Let's keep an eye on this. This looks very suspicious. It is not even a few cycles later and who do we find down here? Besides the tunnel dug into the natural tiles, we can see Lan innocently digging up what looks to be a geyser. And while I went into the kitchen and made me a fresh and nice cup of coffee, look what I came back to. Lan excavated a vent and a slush geyser as it appears. We also found a few arbitraries and a few pips. For some reason it seems that they want to build more tunnels and what seems to be some form of foundation. Eight hours later, this is how our asteroid looks. Looks. Here in the middle I'm planning a monument to commemorate all of the lovely patrons. Meanwhile on Slopeville, the last remaining duplicant, Randy Jensen, after cold-heartedly letting HP die on the floor, got a task to build themselves a bed, some farming plots and a liquid pump, which they sadly didn't manage in time. But what is even worse, they did not activate the printing pot beforehand. I had forgotten to task that. Screw you Luma for being forgetful. Sekou's place on the other hand has changed drastically. As you can see by the temperature down here to the right, if the game lets me, holy heck the lag. You can see the green temperatures, which means that we are now temperature controlled in this area. I also got a few more duplicants. A few of them need training though, before they can go and help the others out. Or in this case, just supply the freaking suits and then you can help out Nails and Mr. Steve. Where are all the duplicants? Well, they have been busy here. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what I was trying to avoid. They already started running on the hamster wheels. These here are the new... It's not a prison, it's more of a training area for new duplicants. And we want the 200 dupes no matter what, so why not place them here? In case we are running out of diamond, I am inclined to build three diamond presses right here. This is the cool place where we have 99 tons of coal left, which we can turn to refined carbon and then turn into diamonds. And this is easily refuelable with this red bolt reflector shooting down and then shooting to the right. Or I can just reroute it to refill the red bolt engine. Or I can even use this upward shooting one if I turn this around. To, then I can use this red bolt reflector from the refilling of this down here and route it to the right. My refined carbon diamond production is running. Now we only need to build this tiny thing here because I do not want to activate our giant setup at the moment. There you go. Now that this is activated we should shoot tiny amounts of red bolts in this direction. Filling it up slowly. Nice. I could of course increase the red bolts here maybe to 10 and then reset it later. Hmm, diamonds, nice. Exactly what we need for the monument. And this concludes Steku's place.
Now let's check out Wade's Planet. On Wade's Planet I was fed up with the horrible water and oxygen situation and wanted to fix that with an expansion of the salt water duplication in combination with the self-powered SPOM system. But to make a long explanation short, we are not producing enough power and we don't have enough duplicants to handle the emptying of the salt canister and the desalinators. So the system sucked. As you can also see by all the hurt duplicants here. At least it worked for a while and helped with the power and oxygen. Another thing that we did on Wade's Planet is build this giant array of solar panels here on the top. And now we can check out what happened on the oldest of the planets, the main planet. What I did on the main planet though is since we were running low on sand all the time, I tried implementing another one of those duplication machines with the salt water so that the dupes can desalinate it and crush the salt if they want to. Down here the dupes can crush the salt. You can see McLim producing a little bit of sand and table salt in process. What I also did here on the, this planet is dump all of our, where is it here, the petroleum generator water that is being produced and sucked up by this pump down here. It is being being pumped down here into these, how are they called, I just need to learn the name, conduction panel, cooling the robo miner, cooling the auto sweeper, dumping the polluted water in this area here with space behind it so that if it turns into steam it will get just sucked up into space and if we drop the polluted water here we will produce, there you see, dirt, then we cook it, produce sand, dig it up. Collect it with the auto sweeper and transport it to the conveyor loader. The conveyor loader then sends it away, lets it circle and dumps it. You can imagine how long this took getting in there and fixing stuff. Besides that the main planet had no side stories involving any duplicants. It was just used as a material transport transit and to send its materials to other planets. With the side stories on all of these planets out of the way, I can tell you what happened in the main storyline. The main storyline is the one where I try to connect the shown planets, the ones here in the background, with a setup like this, which I have shown on the second channel, the Luma Raw channel. Remember that even though the transfer would still work in the current version, Clay Entertainment fixed our massive Red Bolt cannon, meaning you can no longer utilize this method to create a giant amount of Red Bolts. What I mean is, first make a hole in the neutronium wall, then fiddle around with auto supers dispenser and conveyor loaders until one asteroid can reach the material of the other asteroid. For that, starting on Flodista, we can plan the initial auto sweeper setup here on the right. Until the dupes finally build them, we can already start with the reception part of the cross-border material transport system. Here on Aiden's asteroid we can also prepare a ladder shaft, which then allows us to build the actual reception system on top as well. I also prepared a few ladder systems on other asteroids and planets as well. Back on Aiden's asteroid, Aiden is one of the only useful dupes at the moment, doesn't complain, is happy and actually builds stuff. I think we can print another dupe on this planet as well. We do have a vomitor, unpracticed artist, but a quick learner. Nine athletics. Ooh, this one will be lamb. Welcome to the base lamb. On Flodissa we took in a few more dupes, not much. As you can see by the top left here we are at 58 dupes in total. And on the top right we finished the cross planetary transport system. This leads to some of the other planets, not sure. I think it is the main planet where we haven't finished the system on neither side. It then leads to Wade's planet where we also built such a system. And theoretically, yeah. I planned the same system here on the right side. Okay, so let's test this system here. We go to the first planet, Flodista. We do drop something that we need to construct this. In our case, this should be steel. Manufacturer's material, steel, we drop two tons. Set this to nine, activate this, let the dupes in. We set this to sweep only, all. Current errand, yes. There's a dupe common somewhere, not sure. Andras, there you go. We will follow you. Putting on the suit, going up the ladder, going past the rocket platform. Come on, yes. Nascule dupe number three is coming as well. Man, you are fast. Delivering, dropping it, yes, that is enough. There is the material. Do not pick this up again, no. Stop it, dupes, no. So the material is here. There we have two tons of steel. Yeah, two tons. Now if we switch over to Wade's planet, Wade's planet is right here. He used auto sweeper, we set this to all. <laughs> now we do have the two tons of steel right here, which means we can build with it. First, the battery module, nice. 
so we can power the system and then everything else that we actually need for this so even more of this stuff here a conveyor loader now we do have steel and we do have copper and so on maybe for now just here this is the one that transports the stuff away and one that transports the stuff there for now first the conveyor chute which needs to go here and then we will deliver material from stake coos place but first let's test the system starting from the one tile storage on flotista cobalt ore transfer it so the cobalt ore will be dropped here now we go to weights planet and pick it up yes nice it is already being picked up which means we can now build the conveyor rails from the cobalt ore we just picked up and <laughs> we can even we can even see the conveyor rails nice lira has died yeah we know i also wanted a very long conveyor line on top but i don't have the material at the time and i could just send the material from the other planets over when i have built the systems on both sides i also sent one halo euro to space a few times so we can finally finish the research and now we can build the monuments Sadly, on Steku's side, Ada hasn't finished her part of the deal. And frankly, that will take a few more duplicate weeks. A few more duplicate weeks later. Let's check out a few planets that we did connect. So here we can see the planets next to each other. Flodista on the left, Wade's planet, the main planet. This here is Steku's place. This here is Aiden's asteroid. And this is the not yet connected Zapiel, if I see that correctly. Then we do have a larger border, not sure what's happening here. And two planets on top of each other. Game, just no. Let me take a look. Let me go to Zapiel, maybe we can see better there. Zapiel, the tree planet. And on top of the tree planet, we do have the fiery planet. Right next to that is the moon planet. And underneath that is the undiscovered regolith asteroid. Still one undiscovered, didn't know that. It is hard to maneuver here. The camera is pushing you to the side which is why I couldn't focus on that very good. By the way if you're wondering how I get to this I am in the cinematic mode alt and s and then I can zoom out and if I press ctrl and f I can activate and deactivate the visuals for the next planets to the left and to the right only if you have discovered them and I'm not sure only maybe if you have the dev mode activated I do have some kind of dev mode activated all the time because I use this plus 10 speed from the dev mode but only that where were we Besides connecting the already mentioned planets there's a last thing that I did for this episode on Flotista here on Flodista, we basically non-stop produced a large amount of steel. Non-stop isn't completely true because we also are dependent on the water here. Time to refill this thing and on our material that we still have lime 3 tons, refined carbon 3 tons and iron 16 tons. We are at, let's check this, 73 tons of steel at the moment and totally out of refined carbon, uh, totally out of coal for the refined carbon. Do you know where I got my coal from in the first place? I actually used our transport system up here, no, up here. How did I do that? We do have this here, the conveyor loader, which is set to diamond at the moment. We do not want the diamond. We do want coal, allow the manual use. Go up to consumable ore, check the coal, set this to nine, and then we check if we do have coal on this planet, yeah. A lot of coal in the one tile storage. A dupe will now come by, fill this up, hopefully. Yeah, Ted, current errand. Then we see if this is connected. This should go up here, up here, and we drop in the top left corner if we connect this up here, like so. And there is the coal. Speed this up a bit. And as soon as the coal is dropped here, you can see the coal being picked up on the first planet, on our Flodista planet, right here, the top right corner. Also being delivered to this conveyor loader and dumped into our one tile storage after filtering out everything that we do not need in the one tile storage. And then we can use it for the steel production. What do we need all this steel for? First, let me make a little bit room in the base. For that, I need to get rid of a little bit of these nuclear waste that I've accumulated here. So let's just dump that up there. Copy the settings from these two to nuclear waste, enable auto bottling. Priority 9. The storage bin has solid nuclear waste. Can we place that somewhere else? No, no, no. We, we leave this. We deconstruct a second one later on. But for now, we just wait.
Check this out, now we do have enough space for a lovely monument. Go to the monument base, invest 7500 kilogram of steel and 2500 kilogram of obsidian and place it roughly around here with our orientation to the right. Let's check this, more like this. Then can we already place the second one, the middle section? 2500 kilogram plastic, ceramic and 5 tons of steel. We cannot place it, we need to wait for the dupes. Once the dupes delivered enough materials, they started building the monument, layer for layer. This might be burning through our ceramic and our plastic on this planet, but we do have enough steel. What we apparently do not have enough of is space. So I gotta get rid of a whole lot of buildings, reroute some piping, reroute some power cables. With this we should be able to build the head of the monument. Oh and let's not forget about the conveyor rails. With our beautiful monument built here on Florista, it is time for the hard part, the designing process. Which duplicate do we want to represent this planet? And what kind of pose and foundation should they get? After clicking on everything, I figured that we can have them represent this planet's core values. Built on the foundation of red bolts, punching right through the right side of the planet. The direction of the fist showing the direction of the red bolts. Then we finished the episode with a lot and a lot more beautification on Flodista. Starting with background tiles and sculptures, even here to the left of the planet, hopefully increasing our decor. Because as you can see, let me click it, there are still a lot and a lot of red areas. Which brings us to the second stage, pixel packs. Extremely material intensive, but with a very high decor value. As we can see here, even overpowering the negative debuff from the cables. Which is why I even replaced the drywall here in the recreation dance room. Which makes feral kittens so happy that they are giving out balloons to all the inhabitants that are not under arrest. With this I will be ending this episode. Tell me down in the comments what you thought of this episode. And what you would like to see if I ever do another let's play. Do you prefer the let's play style of the main channel or of the second channel? Or do you prefer the let's play style I used when I was still pretty inexperienced? Which I still am. Because depending on that I can choose how much effort I will put into these videos. The result for you would be more or less edited videos or a tiny amount of very cinematic videos. Thank you all for watching, leave a like, love you all and see you next time.